On October 6th, we had our usual LZs and PZs. My very best friend Ray Hopkins from Grand Junction, Colorado decided two weeks ago that he wanted to become a crew chief and fly with the flight. He was in maintenance for five months and on bunker guard with me for the first month. I asked him why he wanted to fly with the flight as it was very dangerous. I said it was best to stay in maintenance where it was comparatively safe. He said that he wanted to be a hero like we were, flying on combat missions every day. He said he wanted to tell his grandkids some war stories that he experienced in the army in Vietnam. I advised him against the idea, but he was determined like the rest of us were, to do his utmost in the war effort. So he began flying as crew chief, usually part-time, as an extra helicopter was needed or someone went on R&R. &R. He didn't have a helicopter of his own but they were going to assign him one for maintenance. I checked out the helicopter that he was going to be assigned to, and read a Z it in the logbook for a bad tail rotor bearing that needed to be replaced before it could be flown again. Red X's should never ever be overridden or ignored. As a flight that we had landed some troops and went back somewhere to refuel and were on our way to pick up more troops. Unknowingly to me, Ray's Red XZ helicopter was joining our flight. We were flying about 800 feet up in stagger flight formation when all of a sudden, a helicopter dropped out of formation and started spinning to the ground where it crashed and exploded into a big fireball. All four crew members dead. I didn't see it fall out of the sky but saw it on the ground totally on fire. There was a lot of talk over our flight radios. We could not go down and recover anything as the NVA VC were in strength on the ground. And besides, there could be no one still alive in the crash. I think we flew on and did our next LZ. There was a lot of talk about what number that helicopter was and who were the crew members on it. Through radio talk, I found out that the helicopter was the one I read Z. I figured someone changed the tail rotor bearing and somehow the aircraft was shot down. Then through more radio back and forth, I found out that my best friend Ray Hopkins was on that crashed helicopter and that the tail rotor bearing was never replaced. I came on the radio and said that I had grounded that helicopter until the tail rotor was replaced. I read X said that helicopter and it was not to fly with a red X in the logbook. Someone from headquarters, I think, radioed back that a tech inspector in maintenance circled my red X, making the helicopter clear to fly one mission. A tech inspector who never flew directly killed four of our combat crew by circling my red X, of which I never heard of done before. By the time the flight landed at Puloi, our base for the day, we all knew who the guy was that circled my red X. I jumped out of my helicopter and with my Colt 45 automatic in hand, I started to run to the maintenance hangar to kill the tech inspector. There were a lot of pilots and other flight crew members right behind me. It was sort of like a lynch mob. I was going directly for him. He seen me and turned around to get away. I wanted to tell him why he was dying while I shot him, but figured if he ran, I would still shoot him very dead anyway. I was grabbed from behind by a lot of guys from the flight and I let go of my 45. They wanted to kill the guy too but didn't want to see me get into trouble. That was the last anyone seen the tech guy. They must have transferred him immediately before someone killed him. I pretty much collapsed into tears. I was totally devastated by Ray's death just as I knew his parents would be. Ray was a single child of elderly parents from Grand Junction, Colorado, and he and his parents were such fine people. His parents were always sending Ray and his friends packages of beef jerky, cookies, clothing, or whatever. Ray enjoyed giving things away. He got an actual thrill seeing other people happy. That's what made him the happiest. The four crew members that were burnt in the crash were listed as missing in action by the Army because all the bodies were just ashes and their dog tags melted in the extreme heat of the metal and fuel fire. Really nothing left but the heavy transmission. We had a religious service for the four fellows and I sent Ray's parents a letter stating how he died and that indeed he was dead and had everyone in our flight sign the letter. 
I expressed in the letter how Ray was a great guy and everyone liked him, which they did. Ray was 18 years old when he died. He was forced to join the army by a judge in his hometown at 17 years old. Otherwise, he was to be thrown in jail for drinking beer. I cried for three days and nights straight. I was useless and did not fly in my helicopter and told the company commander that I quit the army right then and there. He could shoot me or throw me in prison, I didn't care. That was it for me. It was probably my second mental breakdown in Vietnam and my third one in my whole life. The first was when my wonderful grandfather, the father of my mother and uncle died. The second was when I saw that bunch of dead high school soldiers laying side by side whose parents didn't know they were dead yet. And now Ray and the other guys dead, and the war keeps going on and on. All this killing on both sides, such a waste.